Good evening, my name is Nancy Farrell and I'm part of the Green Line Transformation Team and welcome to our meeting. We're gonna wait a few minutes and give people an opportunity to sign in. In the meantime, I wanna remind you that the meeting is being recorded. Hello again, we're on hold for a few minutes uh, waiting for people to join us and we'll start in another minute or so. Thank you. So good evening. My name is Nancy Farrell. Again, I'm a member of the Green Line Transformation Team here with you tonight to talk about the upcoming B Branch Station Consolidation Project. First thing you should know that if you're interested in closed captioning, it is you can click on the CC closed caption at the bottom of the page. Also want you to be aware that this meeting is being recorded, which we're doing so that we can post it on the website so it's available to anyone who either misses the meeting or prefers to watch it that way. So our virtual meeting overview, um, as you know, there are the, it's great to have the opportunity to meet with you tonight, but in order to have a, an effective conversation, what we're going to do is mute everyone until after the presentation is completed. And at the end, if you'd like to ask a question, you can do so by putting it in the Q&A at the bottom of the screen, or you can press the raise hand button to share your question or comment verbally. We will recognize you, we'll unmute you and ask you to unmute yourself, and then you can ask your question. We'd ask you to um, only ask one or a short question at a time, and if we have extra time, we'll go back and, and recognize repeat speakers. If you're joining by phone, you have the opportunity to participate by pressing star nine, which show, makes your hand show up as wanting to speak, and then we will be able to recognize you. So. Now that we're oriented, I'm going to ask Ben Friesen, who is a senior director of Grant of GLT, to begin the presentation. Ben, thanks, Nancy. Um, so I'm Benjamin Friesen, senior director for the GLT, and I'm joined by other members of the GLT team here tonight. GLT starts every meeting with a focus on safety, so let's take a safety moment now before the presentation. So. As we are in the midst of a second wave of the coronavirus, we've seen increases in cases around the Commonwealth. It is important that we all continue to take appropriate actions to protect ourselves and each other. Wear a mask or face covering, wash your hands, keep your distance from others, don't share food, drink, or utensils, and stay home if you're sick. At the T, we take COVID-19 safety precautions very seriously for our riders. Please reach out to GLT if you see anything of concern when riding the green line. So stay vigilant and stay safe, everybody. So tonight we're gonna to cover the project scope, the construction schedule, and the alternative service during construction. Please allow us time to take you through the 25 minute presentation. We'll have time in the end to answer your questions. 
If any, if you have any other questions after this evening's meeting, you may reach us at glt at mbta.com. The presentation and a recording will also be available online at mbta.com slash glt. So before we get started with the project information, I'd like to take a minute to highlight how the B Branch Station Consolidation Project advances the goals of the Green Line transformation. So you can see here, uh, there are, we've divided our program into four levels of transformation. Level zero, safety and state of good repair. Level one, accessible stations. Level two, legacy car replacement. And level three, increased capacity. So these are all key elements of the holistic objectives of the GLT program. The project that we're discussing tonight will not only improve accessibility and safety for all riders, so level zero and level one, but also improve the overall quality of service for the Green Line. Under the, accomplish, uh, under the direction of Angel Pena, the Chief of Green Line Transformation since 2018, We've worked with our municipal partners to implement many improvements on the B branch and across the entire green line. Last year, despite the impacts of the pandemic, we worked closely with our municipal partners and colleagues across the MBTA to deliver important safety and reliability upgrades on all green line branches while taking measures to support local businesses and essential workers who rely on public transit. We will continue to work with these communities we serve while making the important improvements in 2021, and we look for, forward to opportunities to accelerate our work to minimize the duration of the construction and the inconvenience. So now, let's look at the B Branch Station Consolidation Project, which we're very excited to share more about this evening. So Leo, let's get started with an overview of the project scope. Thank you, Ben. Hi everyone, my name is Leo Murphy and I'm the MBTA Green Line Transformation Project Manager for this exciting project. Let me start off by pointing out that the picture on this slide illustrates what the two new stations are gonna look like. So let's define consolidation. In order to be 100% accessible and at the same time improve service, this project is going to consolidate or merge four stops that are in close proximity to each other into two new modern light rail stations. So this means that instead of stopping at every block, the train will stop at every other block, but will still pick up the same number of passengers. This will not only improve travel time, but more importantly, these four stops will be, will be replaced with two modern accessible surface stations with raised platforms for accessible boarding, 150 foot long canopies, lighting, emergency communication equipment, signage, benches, and windscreens and fencing for increased customer safety from traffic on Comav. So here is the project map that shows how the consolidation works. The boxes with the red border around them show where the four existing stops are currently located. There is a stop at every block. The longer boxes with the green borders show the new stations A and B. This plan helps illustrate that capacity is not being reduced. It's just being shifted and combined and made more efficient so that the trains only have to stop twice. The map illustrates that Babcock is being merged with Pleasant Street and St. Paul is merging with BU West. One thing I'd like to point out here is the location of the existing Pleasant Street station. This is the only existing station that will be merged with a new station, Station A on the plan. That means Pleasant Street station has to be closed at the beginning of construction so we can build the new Station A at that location. Okay, so let's talk about improvements for riders. Customer safety will be greatly improved with wider raised accessible platforms, two entrances, two means of egress per station, and riders will be protected with canopies and windscreens and fencing as a buffer from the street traffic and weather. The former stops will now become proper stations with amenities such as lighting, seating, and access to emergency communication equipment. 
To sum up the improvements for riders, let me just say that instead of standing along a windy curb right next to traffic at a busy intersection competing with pedestrians, riders will now be able to enjoy the benefits of a modern accessible light rail station. Additionally, by eliminating two stops, the overall trip will be faster through this section of the Green Line. Now let's talk about construction sequence, or to say it another way, where the work is going to happen and for how long. Work is scheduled to start on Monday, February 15th and scheduled for nights and weekends. As stated earlier, Pleasant Street needs to be permanently closed early in construction. Service will continue at Bob Babcock Street, St. Paul and BUS stations on weekdays until 9 p.m throughout construction. But on weekends, these stations will be closed along with the other BU stations inbound to Kenmore where busing will replace train service. There'll be more on that topic later. But GLT is looking for ways to accelerate construction which may involve weekday closures. But right now the plan is for what we call early access bus diversions starting at 9 p.m. on weeknights and full station closures on the weekends with bus diversions. So this slide has a great color and numbering code that shows the location and sequence of construction activities. This numbering code will be referenced further on in the presentation. Please note that the top graphic map is a diagram showing locations of work. The bottom bar graph shows the timeline for that work. The purple circles with number one and the small purple bar on the chart shows the location and timeline for the closure of Pleasant Street. The green circles with number two and the green bar on the graph shows the location and timeline for utility prep work. Then we have blue and gray circles with numbers three through six. These indicate two stages of the work. Numbers three and four are for stage one which are for two eastbound or inbound platforms. Numbers five and six are for stage two, which are for the two westbound or outbound platforms. Orange number seven shows the timeline for the demolition of the old remaining platforms after the new platforms are complete. The, the I'm sorry, <laughs> the following slides reference this color code system in the top right hand corner of each slide. As stated earlier, Pleasant Street needs to be closed early because it occupies half the space where the new station A will be constructed. Pleasant Street Station will be closed end of service Friday, February 26th. During weekdays, while trains are operating, riders who typically ride from Pleasant Street will have a short walk to alternative stations. Notice the X surrounded by red on the map. This is where Pleasant Street Station is now. From Google Maps, the estimated walk time from Pleasant Street to St. Paul or Bat Park Station is somewhere between two to five minutes. So note this slide has the green circle two in the top right hand corner. This is for the underground utility prep work that was shown in the early, earlier color coded slide. Electrical components need to be installed underground to tie into the new stations. The electrical utility prep work needs to happen at both Babcock and St. Paul Street, but the only impact to riders will be when this work is done at Babcock Station in March. St. Paul will be closed during all weekend diversions for the duration of the project, so we can accomplish the utility work here without any additional impact to riders. However, we will need to close Babcock Station for two days the weekend of March 6th and 7th. Other than those two days, Babcock Station is gonna be used for all the bus transfers to and from Kenmore. For the weekend of March 6th and 7th, bus diversions will have to go to Washington Street. So now we're looking at the dark blue and the gray circles from the earlier slide. The stage one is for the two inbound platforms. The inbound platforms are numbers three and four on the lower half of the graphic map. Stage two 
is for the two outbound or westbound platforms, and they are number five and six on the upper half of the map. So the work will start with drilling and installing foundation piers for the canopies, the light poles, the windscreens, and the fencing. Then the underground electric utilities will be installed before the platform and walkways are constructed. Then comes the installation of the steel canopies, the lighting, communication equipment, station signage, and other amenities. The following illustrates road closures and lane closures. As stated earlier, at the start of construction, the contractor will drill shafts for the foundation piers. They will do this work after revenue service between 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. The reason why they're doing the work at this time is because the drilling requires a temporary road closure with detours. This work is planned to happen overnight to minimize traffic impacts and to avoid interrupting regular bus service on Calm Ave. Police details will be redirecting vehicles to a two-way traffic detour on Calm Ave at stations A and B. This slide shows the road closure and detour around station A. The next slide shows a similar road closure around station B. So once again, the road closures and detours will happen early in construction and will, and will be between 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. Now let's talk about lane closures, which is different than road closures just described. This graphic is for station A showing a single lane closure map. During the majority of construction, including weeknights after nine and weekends, there will be single lane closures on ComAv that don't require detours. The lane closures will not impact bus service or pedestrian access. And this slide is very similar and shows a map of station B single lane closures. And now, Tamika Thibodeau, Senior Director for GLT, will talk about service impacts and wayfinding during construction. Thank you, Leo. The MBTA will ensure that riders have informed of transit alternatives during construction. Let's talk about what that will look like. Signage will be set up for all riders at stations and monitors during construction. Advanced warning signs will be posted by drivers for drivers, project updates and service schedules will be posted on mbta.com and sent to our email prescribers. During construction, when the stations are closed during regular service hours, riders will be redirected to Route 57 bus stops. Pedestrian pathways of travel and work zones will be marked. When the stations are closed, bus diversion will be between Bathbox Street and Kenmore Station. So how will this construction impact train service? Train service will be available between Babcock and Boston College and Kenmore eastbound. Trains will not run between Kenmore and Babcock, weeknights between 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. and during the weekends. During these times, the station will be closed and buses will run between Kenmore and Babcock, except for the weekend of March 5th through 8th. That's when the utility work is scheduled at Babcock Station, so buses will be between Kenmore and Washington that weekend. The map shows the location of existing bus stops for the 57 route. And we will use these when the stations are closed. All drivers and trains are to assist riders and operate lifts when needed. For health and safety, all riders' service will be monitored throughout and adjusted to reduce crowding. With all that being said, I will now ask Nancy to explain how you can stay connected and get up to date information for the duration of this project. Nancy? Thanks, Tamika. Um, this slide has some real important information as so you can stay in touch with the project. Subscribing to our email list will ensure that you receive updates on the construction schedule and reminders of work that's upcoming. When, well, of course, we realize that construction causes inconvenience and can be noisy, and we're asking that we are requiring the contractor to take specific steps to mitigate noise. 
These will include a planning where trucks are unloaded, loaded and hauling operations so as to minimize the noise impact on sensitive locations and neighbors. Using backup alarms on the vehicles and equipment that are either ambient sensitive type or manually adjustable to the level of maximum 5 dBA above ambient noise. At nighttime, they will use hand signals only. And locating stationary equipment so as to minimize noise impact on the community. So these and other measures we hope will um, impact and reduce noise during construction to the extent that that's possible. If you wanna alert us to any noise issues or any other problems, we have a dedicated hotline which is available 24 seven as soon as construction starts. The number is 508-646-4691. It's on the screen here and we'll be including it in all of our messaging. You can also sign up for MBTA alerts, mbta.com slash alerts for service alerts, or you can check online for the latest information. I'll wrap up by saying we want to ensure that you know as much as possible and how to find the information you need and to correct it directly with us at glt at mbta.com to ask questions or to provide us with any concerns or other information you want us to have during the project. We want to thank you for taking time to participate in this meeting and now we're going to open the discussion for Q&A. Um, I'll remind you how that will happen. Um, we slipped to the next slide. Great, thanks, Amanda. Um, you can use the Q&A button, which is at the bottom of your screen. You can um, use the raise hand button and then we'll call on you and unmute you so that you can ask a question. Um, and if you've joined by phone, you can use star nine. But before we get to everything, I want to see if any of the elected officials or city representatives who are with us wanted to ask any questions. And I thought Representative Vitolo is here, and now I'm not sure that I see him. I see the hand. And there he is. Yeah, he is. Allow okay. you to talk. Okay, great. You should receive a little notification on your end. There he is. How are we doing? Good. Welcome, Representative. Uh, it's great to see all of you, and I, I really want to congratulate uh, the Green Line team. This is not my grandparents station consolidation where stations just disappear off the map and too bad you just have to hoof it, right? I mean, for the riders uh, who typically use all four of these platforms, they might have to walk an extra 50 yards, but in exchange, they're getting platforms that are wider, that are more comfortable, that are ADA accessible, that increase safety with two entrances and exits that are higher so that people get on and off that uh, green line trolley faster. And so I think it's really a home run um, for everybody who lives in the neighborhood, including my constituents on the Brookline side. Um, I noticed your stations are currently A and B. I've already extracted a promise that we will not name one of the stations St. Paul, since we already have a St. Paul station on the C line. And it's absurd to have two stations with the same name in different places. Um, and so uh, I have no doubt you'll find uh, a different name for that. I would encourage a Gannis Arena, um, you know, for the for the western of the two stations. It's it's the largest uh, facility nearby, and for folks who are going to a Gannis Arena for a concert or a hockey game or something else, um, it's just really helpful to folks who don't live right in the neighborhood to have that as a marker. So I would encourage uh, thinking about naming it a Gannis. Uh, but really, I just wanted to say that. The Green Line team has really been fantastic on this one, and it's um, it's not the biggest project you're working on for sure, but uh, really great job by everyone. So thank you very much for all of your efforts on this. Thanks, Representative. Thank you for coming. Um, I will tell you, there's a committee at the MBTA who makes uh, those decisions about naming stations, but we'll be sure to share your advice with them. And Tommy, I just like to add, um, we really enjoyed working with you last year. To on all, all the improvements in the Brookline area. So this is um, this is a great opportunity to do that again. So um, the chief of the Green Line Transformation, Angel, is dedicated to pushing those improvements forward on, on not only the B branch, but the B, you know, all the branches on the surface branches of the Green Line. So thank you for your continued support. Thanks, Ben. Uh, I also see we have Jim Curley from BU. Jim, did you have any concerns or questions you wanted to raise with us? You can. Yep, 
Nope, I don't see him. Uh, uh. Can you unmute him? Oh, can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Oh, Welcome. sorry about that. I wasn't expecting to speak, but I will just say uh, this was a very um, thorough and informative presentation. Um, we appreciate all the work the team has done in uh, informing our community over at BU. And as Rep. Patolo said, the uh, neighborhood of Brookline, uh, you know, the, uh, it should be uh, an exciting year of construction and uh, can't wait to get to work with you guys. And we hope to be a resource for the T as well as the neighbors of Brookline for any questions on how this impacts BU. But uh, once again, great work. Great, thanks very much. We appreciate you being here. And uh, Matt Moran um, from the city. Matt, I don't know if you wanna jump in at all. Putting you on the spot here, Matt. If you would like to speak, please do raise your hand. Perfect, and I'm gonna allow you to talk. Hey, thanks very much. Uh, Matt Moran with the Boston Transportation Department. Just want to say, echo what everyone's been saying, great work um, and really looking forward to the results. No specific questions or feedback at this time, but just again, uh, really appreciate the coordination and the effort on this. It's gonna be a good project when it's done. Great, thanks very much, Matt. Um, also, I saw, I see Stefan Wunsch. Stefan is from the T-Rider Oversight Committee. Stefan, I don't know, um, you can raise your hand if you'd like to uh, share anything with us, any concerns? I'm going to allow you to talk. Okay. And you should receive a notification. Yep. How's my audio? Is that good for you guys? That's great, thank you. Excellent. Um, yeah, actually, I'll, I'll ask the question that I had typed uh, since oh. you gave me the opportunity to speak. Um, I'm a, a former BU student and a resident of, uh, of Brighton. And so I'm very familiar with standing on those very narrow platforms. And my, my number one concern um, is whether or not there's any opportunity to take, and I know this is very controversial to suggest this, but to take uh, some of the roadway lanes back to be able to widen the new platforms. Um, having stood, for example, at Pleasant Street more often than I would like to remember, mm -hmm. um, the, the proximity of the passing vehicles is just so frightening. Um, is there any opportunity here to make wider, uh, safer platforms? Ben, I see you nodding away, so I'm gonna let you take that one. Yeah, so that's a great question, uh, Stefan. Um, what I can say at the moment is that the new stations will be completely uh, compliant with regards to the accessibility requirements, so they're gonna have the appropriate width and the appropriate length. Uh, to serve not only to serve basically riders of all abilities you know so uh, it'll improve the, it'll vastly improve the experience if you're in for a wheelchair and you're trying to get to the station um, it'll make it a lot less treacherous and on both ends of the station you're going to have uh, basically an entrance a way of accessing both ends of the platform so i, I think we've all been in that position where we, we can, we've seen the platform, but we can't get to it because there isn't an actual demarcated pedestrian walkway to one edge of the platform. So you have to do, do this sort of circuitous route to get to the station. Uh, the two new stations are gonna solve that by basically having access on both ends of the platform, appropriate width, uh, a lot better uh, shielding of passengers from traffic on Commonwealth Avenue. And I'll also add that this is just um, the first step in a long-term vision for the B branch. Uh, I think you were you were mentioning taking uh, taking back part of the roadway from Commonwealth Avenue. For the larger term vision of the B branch, we are working closely with the city of Boston to appropriately size all of the stations on the B branch in the future to uh, basically widen the platforms and lengthen them. So, yes, and I'll throw in Stefan as someone who took. Uh the T to work from there for about 15 years. There is a fence that's going to be behind you when you're standing along the platform. So I think all of us will feel a lot safer uh, in that condition. Okay, I'm going to go to some of the Q&A that we see. Um, and Jack Halverson, hi Jack from the city of Boston, I believe. Will there be off-board fare collection? I think, Ben, that we need to um, consult with our friends at the who are 
who are designing the fair collection system to, for that answer. Is that correct? Yes, that's that's correct. Um, basically, there's two different initiatives that are happening. Again, sort of long-term vision here. One is a comprehensive upgrade to the fair collection systems across the entire T. It's a very exciting project um, that will change uh, basically the fair vending at each of the stations. And the second thing is when we do roll out the new vehicles for the green line uh, in several years, they will probably most likely have the option to pay as you get on the train. So you can imagine there'd be some sort of payment option as you sort of get on the train. As far as off um, uh, vending at the station when it opens, that will, that will not be an option. Okay. Um, and let's see, uh, we have Abby C asked the question, what is one, two, three on the top axis of the timeline months from February? And yes, believe that's correct. But uh, Leo, perhaps you could talk a little more about the schedule. Um, and I forget the slide number for that one, but you know what she's talking about, right, Leo? The, the, um, on the schedule slide, let's see, there we go. I'm going to go back to it and bear with us. Mm, one more. No, is that it? That, there we go. One through 13 is what uh, the questioner is asking about. Okay, I'm trying to see the question. Which question is the it? The question is um, those, those numbers at the top of the, on, the, on the schedule, what do they refer to? And they refer to months, right? Oh, one through 13, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, and um, as soon as it, the, the project, Construction will begin in February, which is month one. And I know that the project team has every hope and expectation of being hoping to finish it faster, but maybe you could comment on that, Leo. Well, it's a 13 month project. So we're expecting be to be done um, if the schedule stays this way, um, February or early March, 2022. But um, as we said in the presentation, we're going to be looking for opportunities to, to shorten that with outages, uh, longer term closures of the stations. But that's just in the discussion phase right now. This is what um, is in the contract for the contractor to finish. Okay. Right, thank you. Yeah, I'd just like to add to that, Nancy. There's sure. uh, basically a lot of factors that we have to account for. And obviously the major one that uh, we have to deal with is the effects of COVID. So we're being very conservative presenting this schedule here, but it is a goal of our team to accelerate whenever possible. Uh, if you had any sort of dose of us last year, that's exactly what we did. And mm -hmm. if we're presented the opportunity, we would uh, accelerate this project. That's what I wanted you to say. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> Um, we've got a couple questions about the timetable, but it looks like I think we've uh, answered them. Uh, Joel Brown wants to know what the process is for renaming stations and is there public input? Actually, Joel, I know there's a process. I don't know what it is. And so we're going to have to look into that one. And unless someone else on the team knows, I know there's a committee that looks at questions like there shouldn't be two stations with the same name and what's nearby and um, you know, does it meet certain parameters? But um, I'm not sure about the public input question. So we will work on trying to get that answer. Chris K asks, thank you for the presentation. Two questions. Are the street light patterns going to change with the two con consolidated platforms? And when is the whole project supposed to be completed? We did answer number two. Um, I, I think the traffic light patterns, um, will they change? And I think perhaps, Ben, could you address that one? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, the, what I can say right now is that there is a, a separate initiative at the MBTA to basically do transit signal prioritization. Wow. And what that basically is, is giving priority to a, a light, the light rail system over the traffic that's in the area, to, you know, to kind of hold the green light a little bit longer uh, for the for the train to pass so those things are being done 
in concert with this project. And so when the time is appropriate, I would anticipate that those the signal timings would be changed. I just can't give you the specifics. And that's actually Stefan's question, which you had just addressed. So there. Um, Abby C asks, she's thrilled that for the stations to be consolidated. The trip inbound down ComAv is brutal, and I think this will help a lot. So thank you. Is there talk of consolidating others? For example, BU Central and BU East. And I don't know the answer to that, Ben. Do you? Could you uh, say that one more time, Nancy? Is there, is there any talk of cons consolidating other stations, for example, BU Central and BU East? Not those particular stations, um, but they're, like I said, we have a long-term vision for the Green Line uh, that includes not only the B branch, but taking a deep look at, at the outer stations in the B branch, uh, the C branch, and um, the E branch as well. So there's a lot of, lot of changes. We're, we're looking at the best way to optimize the station spacing and to, to, to minimize the, the trip time from the uh, terminus all the way down to downtown at Park, Park Street. So those are certainly options on the table as we conduct some of our longer term studies. Thank you, Ben. Um, Anne Mazzola says she's the community liaison for city councilor Liz Breeden. She just wants to say thank you. These consolidations make sense and look great and we appreciate your open communication. Future question would be getting handicapped access to the Warren Street stop to accommodate the veterans going to the new facility residents in that area. And there's another one um, that I don't know if uh, Ben the project is looking at in, in the long term. Yeah, so Warren Street is part of a, a number of stations we're looking at, working closely with the city of Boston because I believe in that section, uh, Commonwealth Avenue, there's a lot of changes that'll happen to the, uh, basically the layout of the, the actual travel lanes along Commonwealth in that area. Mm -hmm. So best thing I can say is that time frame five to 10 years, that whole area is gonna change considerably. And of course, our, our number one mission would be to make those stations more accessible, improve the accessible experience at those stations. Thank you, Ben. <clears throat> Joel Brown asks, will the crosswalks change or will they continue to be at the intersections? So I'm, I'm gonna defer to Leo on that one. Okay, Leo. Hello, uh, no, that's an easy one. The crosswalks are not gonna change. Okay, great. Yeah. Amanda, I see that Matthew Wong has his hand raised to ask a question. Matthew, I'm going to allow you to talk. You should receive a notification. Test. Hello. Excellent. Hello. Hi. Um, my name is Matthew Wong. I am a student at LaSalle University in Newton, which is on the Green Line, on the D branch rather, but I do take the Green Line on multiple branches on a fairly regular basis. The one question, the first question I have is, the weekend in March that Babcock Street is going to be closed, why are shuttle buses or why is train service being cut back all the way to Washington Street? That's cutting out a whole bunch of stops along that section of Con Ave, including Harvard Avenue and Packard's Corner, which stereotypically are quite busy. So I ask, why are we cutting out Packard's Corner, Harvard Avenue, Griggs Street, Warren Street, Dawson Street, and all those stops in between? if we're just closing Babcock Street. Is, is, is there any particular reason why we can't run train service to Harvard Avenue or Backwards Corner and then turn turn back at that point if you can't get through Babcock Street? Mm. Tamika, can you answer that question? Sure, I'll gladly answer that question. So um, the reason why we have to um, sh do shuttle service to um, Washington Street is because for the contract to work safely, we have to turn off the overhead power, which is affected. And the crossover that you see at Babcock Street will not be able to be utilized. So the next available crossover is at Washington Station. So for is the safety of our customers mm -hmm. and our um, contractors that'll be working during that time. So it's just safer to push it up. And that, that station is also accessible. So therefore all our accessible um, customers can also um, get on and off. Okay, thank you, Tamika. And I don't have any other questions at the moment. If there's anyone else who, who would like to uh, ask a question, I encourage you to put it in the Q&A or raise your hand now. Yes, excellent question so far. 
Unless everyone, uh, unless everyone's hungry and wants to go to dinner here, then. I see one raised hand. Uh, yep, okay. Uh, Stefan, yep. I'm gonna allow you to talk. Hello again. Um, just one quick question about um, what the, uh, the I guess the design spec uh, for the new stations is going to cl most closely mirror. Just off the top of anyone's head, do you happen to recall what is the most recent above ground station that has been uh, implemented um, by which we can uh, see what these new stations will look like in terms of the lighting, the mm -hmm. tactile strips, the benches, the walls? I mean, is, is there anywhere we can go now to see what exact products are going to be put in place for these new two stations. And if you don't know, that's okay. <laughs> and you were nodding, so maybe you know. Tamika looks like she wanted to answer. Oh, it's me? <laughs> uh, so um, the closest station that you can kind of look at to see the canopies and the fencing would be the BU um, Central and the BU East stations because they have that canopy and the benching benches there. So if you want to kind of look, that would be the closest one that would have that. Um, we do have a couple questions again about the platforms. Um, regarding the width of the platforms, Joel Brown is asking, is the footprint changing at all? And he asked in terms of width. So width could be, I guess he means from the rail to the roadway. Joel, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so, yes. I mean, so, Leo, do you have a uh, definite answer on the actual maximum width at the stations, including the tactile strip? Yes, I do. Um, so, if we compare this to the existing Pleasant Street station, um, the width is going to increase. So, it's going to be just shy of eight feet wide from the existing platforms, which are much more shallow than that. Okay, that's good news. And any other questions? Chris K says, thank you very much. Any other hands up? Well, I'm gonna remind everyone um, right now of the how to reach us with other questions. Um, don't forget you can write to us at glt at mbta.com. We answer every question um, or we connect you with someone else who can. Um, don't forget we have um, a phone line for during construction, 508-646-4691, and every one of those calls will be answered. That's a commitment we make uh, when we broadcast this information. Oh, wait a second, uh, Matthew, you have another question? Matthew Wong? I'm going to allow you to talk. Hi, um, so this is a this is a purely like hypothetical idea that's probably not even feasible, but just something I thought about that something I've observed, um, I, study, I study a lot of the operations of a lot of transit agencies um, across, the, across the country. And one thing I've noticed is that um, something that the MTA down in New York tends to do, and I don't know whether it would be feasible for both around BTA to do it here, is that whenever there's like a construction or an accident or something that's blocking train service, instead of doing the instead of um, doing the shuttle bus diversion, their first preference seems to be to just reroute the train somewhere else nearby so that the trains are still running. They just can go around whatever is blocking their normal route. <laughs> So, and I, so my, my, my thought is that would there, could there be any potential to, instead of having to basically run the B, what would normally be the B branch trains on the C branch, considering that along Chestnut Hill Avenue, there are the, there are the tracks along Chestnut Hill Avenue that I understand are normally only used for maintenance moves down to the car house, but could potentially in theory, I think, be used to connect to have train service Boston College and South Street and then cross over to Cleveland Circle and run the trains along the C branch so that the, 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 the capacity and the frequency of the trains is still being maintained, just it's in a different spot. And then for people who need the immediate local access to the Commonwealth Avenue stops, then we can have the shuttle bus, the shuttle buses or the 57 bus 
um, up there. I have no idea if that's possible, but just something I thought of that bring up and if, if that is feasible. Hmm. So Tamika, you can weigh in. I know we don't have redundant tracks, but perhaps you could um, weigh in on that one. So no, we do not have redundant tracks, so we can't do that. And to bring a train from the BC line down the hill, it doesn't do a direct connection to the C line, but we do run um, extra service on the C line sometimes when we have shuttle um, diversions on other lines. Um, and you would also miss Chest Chestnut Hill and Chiswick and Sutherland Road and Washington Street and Warren and Alston and Long Ave and Harvard <laughs> and Packers Corner if you rerouted everything from BC down, down the hill. Um, so, you know, there are other options for connections. You can take the bus that runs, um, you know, at Washington Street to connect over to the C line. You can do that. Um, if you want, you could walk down the hill, um, you know, in the summertime or when it's not as cold and get on the C line or the D line that way at Reservoir. So there are definitely other routes you can take. You can take, you know, there's different buses all along the 86 bus. Um, or you can decide where you want to get on the 57 bus. You can get it, you know, on um, Cambridge Street. You don't have to go all the way down to Packers Corner. So there's definitely other options. You know, you can go on to the MBTA website and, you know, do a route my trip. That's an excellent tool. So that way you can figure out different ways. You know, unfortunately, you know, the MBTA is a very, is one of the oldest subway systems throughout. So we don't have that like New York has where they can have the extra tracks where they can do the rerouting. So it's something that we definitely looked at to in the GLT to see if we can do, but remember, especially underground is a lot of historical stuff and you would, we have to you know, do a lot of research to even add that. So hopefully that answered your question, sir. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Joel Brown um, goes back to the width on the sides of the platform um, and asks if, um, the extra space, where is it coming from if net out of the roadway? And I believe that the question is that the space was already taken when ComAv was redone. Um, and um, I don't know, uh, Leo, are the dimensions on the plans that uh, Mr. Brown can see when we post the presentation? Well, the platform width is eight feet from the edge of the tech, tactile uh, strip to the vehicle barrier, Okay. the ComAv. Um, and ComAv was redone a couple of years ago mm -hmm. and they planned for wider platforms when they redid ComAv in the new locations. The old locations are still pretty narrow. Okay, good. Good planning. Thank you. Um, Gretchen Hardigan asked, she joined late, so she wondered if a deck will be available after the meeting. Actually, the deck is already posted on the website, Gretchen, so we hope you'll go and be able to see the details. Um, let's see. And Mr. Wunsch said, thank you. Excellent project work and very well run meeting this evening. Much appreciated. Well, we appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and let's see. Uh, Mr. Wong says he appreciates your suggestion to make of walking down the hill at Chestnut Hill to transfer between branches, but he's been charged a double fare on more than one occasion. We're trying to do that. So sorry to hear that, Matthew, but I hope you got where you were going. So that would be good news at the end of the day. Um, and I don't see any other questions at the moment. No open questions, no hands up. We'll wait a minute, but um, I wanna thank everyone for taking time to participate in this virtual meeting. Thanks also to all of our municipal partners as well as Boston University and others for working with us to advance this important project and improve the quality of service for all Green Line riders. Again, you'll be able to see the presentation. The, um, the recording will be posted. Take sometimes a day or two days for the recording to be posted, but um, you should be able to share it with anyone who would like to see it and get the information. Thank you again so much and enjoy the rest of your evening.